Hello, hello, my lovely friends, and welcome back to the channel. Today is part two of this coffee dye series. Could I be so bold as to call it a series? Maybe. Um, this In this video, we're going to do some coffee dyeing on different kinds of papers and um, to experiment a little bit to see what we get. In the first video, which I will link down below, I did the coffee dyeing only on regular everyday copy 20 24 pound coffee paper in this video we are going to do coffee dyeing on glossy photo paper matte photo paper three ring binder lined paper and we also do some coffee dyeing on cardstock as well and like the first video, I kind of call this the lazy ladies, <laughs> the lazy ladies way of coffee dyeing. In this video, I do not take all my papers and then lay them out individually to dry. I'm letting them sort of dry in stacks, not too thick of piles, like maybe some of them have four or five or six sheets uh, in a stack. But the idea is I want them to dry on top of each other because I want the image to imprint on the paper that's underneath it as well. And I'm getting some really interesting and very cool effects um, by doing this. So I'm dyeing um, Halloween paper because I'm making journals and getting ready for all my Halloween stuff uh, to put up on my Etsy shop for the end of, I want everything done by the end of July. That's why I'm doing Halloween. Of course, you don't have to do Halloween because I know for most people, <laughs> they're like, hey, summer just started. Let's not rush this. Um, I'm just printing off these papers using my regular inkjet printer. I'm printing the majority of these images off just with black. But like I said earlier, some of the, the things I've printed off today, I've left the colors in them to see what happens um, once they're dry and what, what kind of effect we get when we coffee dye um, paper that we've printed that has color in it. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> it doesn't usually work, but you never know until you try these things. Um, we get some really interesting results out of the cardstock and the matte photo paper, as well as it's interesting what happens with the glossy paper as well. There, you know, there are a ton of videos here on YouTube about how to coffee dye paper. And there's ladies out there that are doing just amazing things with coffee dye paper. But some of these techniques that these gals use do require that you that the paper dries in single sheets on its own. And I'm actually doing the opposite. I don't want to dry them singly because I want them layered on top of each other to get that sort of look so that the print on the paper on the top is also being absorbed into the paper on the bottom. So let's turn the camera around and let's get started. I have three different lace patterns and I'm going to take those patterns and these basic Halloween uh, paper patterns and I'm gonna sort of try and use these to make imprints to sort of show through on these ones here so these are just plain obviously plain white and I've just this is an experiment I haven't really tried this before in the sense that I haven't tried to purposely see if I can get some of these images to transfer onto these images now I specifically printed out a few things that had a little bit of color in them because I want to see what happens so we've got this, this ghosty ghoul. He doesn't have any color in him except perhaps a little bit of blue. We obviously have the red here. Um, this guy clearly has orange. And then witchy poo here. You know, she's got some, we got skin tone here. Anyways, I'm very curious to see what happens. My guess is that I'm gonna lose this color but I don't know. Then I thought it would be fun to try one of these because again, I'm experimenting to see what color sticks and what color does not. 
I'm predicting that we might lose this already sort of coffee stained background. Eh, so I don't know. We'll find out. Um, I, so I've got those. Then I've printed out these pages uh, just in the black and white. But for fun, I printed it on cheap Hillroy. Where is it here? The cheap Hillroy lined paper that you use in your binders. So I thought, let's just see how that works for fun. My guess is, again, that we'll lose the lines, the blue lines. But I am very much in the mood to experiment. So we've got that. Now, the other thing is, I'm going to try, we're going to coffee dye some matte photo paper, and we're going to coffee dye some cardstock. And what I'm going to start with here is I have this pile of glossy photo paper. Um, I do not like to print on glossy paper. I'm not a fan of gloss on any level. <laughs> it's just a personal preference. So I thought, okay, well, I have this whole pack. Let's put it in and see what we get. See if I can get some of this here to transfer onto here. So without any further ado, I'm going to start. I've got my hot water. We've got our usual suspects of coffee here. And then we're going to see what we can do. So I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> That's my goal to get through a whole video without you showing you guys the top of my head. It's ridiculous. Okay. So yesterday we did a little bit of both. So last yesterday we did eight. So let's do three of this. I really like the color that we got yesterday. So let's see, that's, and this is a heaping tablespoon, right? So that's, uh, oh my God. What did I do the first one? Three, four, five, six, seven, lucky number eight. That should be good enough. It's all, you know, you're kind of making it up as you go along doesn't matter but I just like to experiment and let's see what we get okay so now because I really like to get my hands in here how hot is that Ooh, hot ish I think I'm gonna steam up the camera a little bit so what we'll do is we'll put most of this in here and then stir it up And then I'll go, I'll get the, uh, I'll get the, the coffee from yesterday. So I can actually put my hands right in the water. I am beyond thrilled with how the paper turned out that we did yesterday. I'm very, very happy with it. In the sense that you can't, again, there's no rules. You can't really screw up. Unless you have a very, very, very specific idea, of course, and you don't get the result that you're looking for, well, then it would feel like a screw up. Part of the beauty of doing these things is that we should not have too many expectations. You know, there's not enough surprises sometimes in life, like true, true surprises. <laughs> so maybe coffee dyeing paper should be one of them. Okay, so how hot is that? Woo, that's not too bad. It's a little, it's a little owie. I mean, it is hot water after all. Let's just cool it down a little bit. Okay, so what I think we're gonna do is, oh, I know, I wanted to show you, first of all, so you know what I'm working with. This uh, photo paper, I bought the gloss by accident. Let me make sure this is in here. So this is from Staples Gloss Basic Photo. Uh, this is 56 pound. Um, and it's just regular, right? So there's that. And then the matte photo paper, which I really like using uh, for pockets and tags, depending on. So this is 61 pound. And this is the Staples Ultimate Premium Photo Paper. 
heavyweight paper. And I have to say, it is... What's interesting is that it feels heavier than the cardstock that I'm using. It feels thicker. But the cardstock... Hang on here. The cardstock... Uh, this is 65 pound. And it's, you know, it's thick cardstock. It's not... I have thicker. I have 80 and I quite enjoy that as well. But anyway, so just so you know, and then, like I said, the regular paper is just regular photocopy paper, and then we have our cheap, cheap lined. Um, what I thought might be fun about using this and seeing what we get with this is that we can always find this for really cheap at Goodwill. I mean, it's cheap at the dollar store. It's just cheap paper. Now, mind you, it's thin, so there might be more of a chance of it tearing while it's wet. I don't know. Let's just play. Let's just see. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to start with um, some of this glossy paper. I don't really know how the glossiness is going to be affected by the coffee because I do not have a brain or a mind for science. I'm the artsy fartsy girl. And I only took <laughs> what minimum science was required in high school. I, I have to be on, like, I knew it was going to be a disaster for me. You guys have heard me talk about the math story where I, I was, I just, that's just not how my brain works. I, I, whatever, yeah. Anyhow, so it may not have killed me to take a science course. I did like grade nine chemistry. I think that's it. I didn't take any biology because I didn't want to cut up any frogs. <laughs> uh, it's true. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I heard through the older kids you know, the kids that were like 15, the older kids, oh boy, um, that you had to dis you had to dissect the frog or you'd fail. So I was like, well, why waste my time <laughs> when I can take an extra art class? Uh, anyways, okay, so let's start. Hmm, I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's do, um, let's start with one of these first. You know what this reminds me of is uh, when you watch people um, developing their own film. Okay, we still have some blue on that uh, on that pinnacle there and on the roof. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so now let's put um, bats here and then we'll take the same one. I only, I did five copies of each of these so we could play around. Now I'm going to put um, some lace here. Now let's try one of these gems. Okay, and then let's uh, let's do witches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these sit for half an hour today, and then I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take them outside. It's still really nice out. What time is it now? It's five o'clock. It's still quite warm. So I think I'll let these dry out on the table um, like I did uh, the other ones um, from the first video. Ooh, okay, so what did I just put in there? Okay, so now let's do this lace. And now I'm going to get one of these witches. I'm really curious to see how this is going to go. Um, let's do, uh, whoops, one of these. I'm not really coming up with a rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of thinking if 
if images are transferred back and forth, what might I like to be sitting across of, on top of, etc. right? Um, okay, now we did, no, we did witchy poo. Let's do uh, the evil pumpkin man. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not really into cutesy Halloween stuff. <laughs> I'm more of the, the dark side. I'm so excited that Halloween is not that far away because we go, we go big here on Halloween. I mean, we've got one of the 10 foot skeletons, like the big giant ones. And we go, like I start putting stuff up in August, at the end of August. Um, some of my neighbors are not totally, they don't say anything to me. I know they would prefer that I didn't start early, but I'm like, I got a lot of work to do, lady. <laughs> I got a lot of Halloween to put up. So the whole front lawn is covered in decorations with a ton of lights. We got fog machines. We got music. And then um, my neighbor, Bob, who I was telling you about in the, uh, the other Coffee Dye video, he lets us decorate his front lawn too. <laughs> it's great. I love it. The kids love it. Oh my God, to hear them squeal with delight is so much fun. Okay, now... I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this lace here. Now let's put in the let's do a cardstock. I only did I didn't do very much cardstock. So this is a photo. Um, my my husband Milos is from Prague, and this was a photo that I had taken a few years ago when we went for Christmas, and then I just put a grungy over. I took all the color out of it. It desaturated it, and then I put the grungy col the overlay on it. So I thought it looked rather spooky. So let's see what we get. We put that down on top. Um, we're going to do some bats again here. So yeah, and you know what? I was not. I wasn't always always a complete Halloween insane person. Um, part of it uh, was we used to live downtown and Halloween was nothing but a puke fest. Like it just was awful. They'd start at eight o'clock in the morning and we're a university town. So it would be full of university students just getting hammered at eight o'clock in the morning. And then we lived above a diner. So they would go to the diner for breakfast and then Oh my God, it was always a mess. Everything would get stolen. I hated Halloween. I hated it. I prayed for rain every year. <laughs> Cause I was like, it just was, it was, I could, I have a lot of tolerance and I like going out for a good throwdown, showdown, hoot nanny and some shenanigans with a few drinks as much as anybody else. But this was just over the top. Okay, now let's see, sidebar, let's do, um, this is the matte photo paper. Now I'm going uh, to put this here. So when we moved here, and it, I just, I was so in awe that we could put stuff out on my front porch. Like I could put flowers out and they wouldn't get stolen. I could put... I could put all kinds of things out and it didn't get stolen. And I just, it took me a full year to understand that. I didn't have to lock everything down. I mean, we would park the our car behind the, where we lived be up above the diner. Cause I, I had a store up there too, right? So we had this huge loft apartment and then the store up there, but they would come by, they would steal the rear view mirror off of our, our car. I can't tell you how many rear view mirrors we had to replace. Like literally, they would steal anything and everything. And if they weren't stealing it, they were throwing up on it. Like it was just, anyhow. So then when I moved here, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Okay, let's put in some of this glossy paper and then let's put, um, Let's put this upside down and see what happens. Um, so then, then I fell in love with Halloween. I mean, I loved it as a kid, of course. I loved Halloween as a kid. Um, and so then it started with one coffin that my dad made for me. 
and then it just grew into this whole thing onto its own. <laughs> and now that you can hardly see any grass at Halloween at our house. We got two two huts, two witches' huts, two two coffins. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's put some lace here. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer this up. I'm going to shut my yap here for a few minutes, and then we'll just fast forward through this process. So that's everything in there, as you can see. Um, the one thing that I keep forgetting to mention, that I do want to mention, is that I printed off the majority of these things um, on draft. So when you're in your printer settings, you can choose if you want to have a really, really high quality print, right? A standard print. Every printer is different, so you have to investigate a little bit. Um, but because I was printing so much black, I I went in and, and turned it on to draft. So I'm not using quite as much black ink. And um, so that means the paper is going to be a little less saturated. And judging by what we got from yesterday, it didn't really make a difference. At first I was printing everything on normal, wondering if I would lose some of the the color of the black ink, but I didn't. So if you're going to be doing this and you're going to be printing off quite a bit, then you might want to look into using the draft selection. Meaning, you know, you can tell right away, it, it, it pushes the paper through your printer a lot faster. So it's not taking quite as long to print. Here we have it. That's it. That's all we've got. So it's uh, quarter after five. Ooh, quarter after five already. Holy cow, the days just zoom in by. So I'm going to leave this for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. Then I will dreamt, I would empty out this like I did in the last video. Then I'm going to take it outside and I'll leave it out there for a few hours and then we'll see where we get. But, um, I will show you what it looks like before I take it outside. So, Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll be back in a little bit. Here we are. It's been an hour since we've had um, put everything in here. So it's looking once again really great and really spooky. So what I'm going to do is, oh wow, is that's the, oh this is going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. This is that glossy photo paper. Look at that, it's picked it right up. So what I'm gonna do, um, this paper, so yeah, see, I, I don't think, I'll do a zoom in. This is the paper that was the Hill Roy and the lines are gone. Hmm, nothing there. Interesting, oh, that's the, this is the shiny, glossy side of the... Oh, we are in for some treats, my friend. How apropos. We're in for some treats <laughs> in our Halloween paper. Ah, I'm super duper excited to... to ah, okay, let's not put the cart before the horse. So, 
Finish your sentence, Lisa. Finish the sentence. What we're going to do is I'm going to tr very carefully see if I can pour. Oh, <laughs> that's a mess. Pour this in. It's a good thing I don't want to use these towels for anything else. Now, because I'm going to take these outside first to start to see drying out there, how that goes, I am i don't think I'm going to worry too much about getting all of the liquid out. Yesterday, I kind of squeezed. Um, today, I think I'm just going to take this out and I'm going to plop it down. I know I shouldn't peek, but I can't help myself. This, this glossy dyed paper is very, very interesting. Um... This is the matte. Can you sort of see the witches there? That's the matte photo paper. I'm not even gonna try and peel apart the stuff that was the cheap school book paper because that is very, feeling very, very delicate. Oh, it's so much fun to have a first peek. So here we have, just very quickly, um, the blue is gone uh, from the, the pinnacle there and the roof. So we've lost the blue, which is exactly what I expected would happen. But you don't know for sure until you try. Okay, so here I've got the lace paper. Nothing happened on the back of this, of this paper. Ooh, but there you can see the 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 bats I'm sorry about the ring light being in the way um, but the bats have definitely transferred onto the matte photo paper oh it's so exciting I'm just trying to see if there's any way we can see any of the orange pumpkin because we put in the 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 mean looking oh <gasps> Yikes, what am I doing? Lisa, don't, <laughs> don't mess with it. <gasps> okay, I'm getting impatient, which I shouldn't do. I just don't want to rip it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll pull that out. It's problem solved there. I love this color. Oh. Um. Do you ever have those moments where you tell yourself to do one thing and then you do the <laughs> exact opposite? Like you're a five-year-old? Don't tell me not to. Because <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh yeah, this stuff is really wet. Well, I'm I'm trying to find the, the really scary goblin ghost figure. And I'm, oh, there's, okay. So that color, there's no orange left there. But boy, that looks good. Hoo-wee. Hoo-wee, baby. In case you noticed, I'm not a real grown-up. <laughs> I just need to put that out there. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so cliffhanger, everybody. Cliffhanger. Oh, I ripped it. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Let's take it outside, and um, let's see where we are in a few hours. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Everything is out on the table. Now, because it's still so soaking wet, um, I haven't really put too many heavy things on top to keep it from flying away obviously right so I'm curious to see where we get in a couple hours I am so so <laughs> so excited to share this with you these came out fantastic few surprises I learned a few things there's some interesting stuff going on here so first of all this is the um, glossy photo paper so what's very interesting about these is that the glossy side took, I mean, look at that. It just soaked everything right up. But the back, nothing. The matte side didn't really get much of anything. So I got some transfer on some of them, which is great. What I think I like these for, because again, I'm not super keen on the, the gloss but these I think will be great in the fronts of journals so you maybe would have the cover here 
you know, and then I would put maybe, I might glue something on here, or glue a, a pocket or something. But these really do set the mood for Halloween. This had lace, one of those lace papers on top of it. See, some of this is still even a little bit wet on the back. So that was interesting. I would have, again, science not, it's not, uh, me and science do not get along, but I would have thought it would have been the matte side that would have taken up a lot of the color, but I clearly was very, very wrong. So these will come in handy for the Halloween journals. Um, I'm curious what this will take when I do uh, the beet dyeing, when we use beet juice. Um, if they will turn red or how that'll work. So that was very interesting. And okay, so are you ready? <gasps> look, 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 look. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go through these. Now let me just let's see. have a look see. So here's more of the paper, the glossy. Again, this picked up this pumpkin paper, just fantastic. So obviously I put, these are the ones that went down like that. This one picked up some of the lace a little bit. And that's just more of the same. Okay, so then here's, you can see how this lace has definitely imprinted itself on there. Same with here, and you can see a little bit of a shadow of this witch here. And again, there's really some interesting blue tones in this. So there's obviously a fair amount of blue ink in the black ink, which we knew, but now what's ever even more interesting is that this is the three hole paper. I love the way this sounds. So this is the Hillroy cheat paper. This works great. All the lines are gone. So again, I think this is this is really interesting. Oh, look at the witches on the bag. From the witches here. So this is great because what this means is if you go somewhere and you can pick up some of that really cheap three ring binder paper for a buck here and there. That's a lot of paper to coffee dye and to, to really pick up color nicely and you don't have to worry about the lines. And I like how it has the, the holes on the bottom. So here we can see we've got a little bit of the haunted house and the raven here. So again, all of the blue color from here is gone. Okay, so here we have more. This did not pick up from here. So here's our scary pumpkin. And obviously there's no orange, but it still is great. And you can see the bats from another paper on there. Because this was white. This was just plain white that I had printed this on. And then we can see the lace on the back there. Ooh, look at Witchy Poo. This is great too. So we've got some really nice faded um, images and then the black lace on top. And you can see some really nice dots. So I'm super duper happy with that. Oh, I was like, okay, what's this? I'm thinking, what happened here? So I think here we have part of the witch here, but then we have one of the scary ghosts, and it's here. So that's fantastic. I'm really, I'm really liking this. I guess the only glitch is that you really have to think about how you're going to layer your papers and in what order if you really want this to be in some sort of special order, right? But again, this lace coming out here, eee, so great. This is more of the glossy paper. Look at that, that just pulls right off. Hmm, okay. 
wonder if I could do gesso. I might sand this a little bit and put some gesso on this. So stay tuned for that video. So here we have bats. Oh, look. Wow. Oh, ooh. I would definitely do that again. So now here is, nope. This is the matte photo paper. That's so great. That's a really deep, deep color too. Oh yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay, so here's more of the Hale Roy, the three ring binder paper with the lace. This is just regular copy paper still. What's, no, hang on, this is not. Oh, okay, so this is this is the regular ordinary cardstock. Oh, that feels great. I wish you guys could feel. Ah, <laughs> I can't resist. So here, and you can see we've got the pumpkins. I might turn on um, this. Might these? I might do a bunch of these. Uh, these would make great pockets. But then you've got this fun lace on the back. Ha, huh, okay, so everything so far we're, we're, is working out great. So we've got copy paper, three ring binder paper. Here's the scary tree on the three ring binder paper. That looks great. We got some witches, some pumpkins. We've got, a, oh, here, so you can sort of see the pumpkins through there a little bit. I love this print. But then we've got more bats from here. And of course you can see the bats through here. Oh, now here is my picture of the astronomical clock from Prague. And this is on cardstock regular. I think this is 80, no, this is 65 pound cardstock. So this, this really faded, but I still love it. Um, that's great. These might make good pockets too. Okay, so we've got lace. The lace looks great over the witches. Lots of pumpkins on the back there. More witchy poo. So here's this really interesting Mm, okay, so I, I love these black flowers. This is three, obviously three ring binder paper. So I guess the, the, the one lesson here with these ghosts is that they leave quite a large imprint, which I don't mind, but that would be something to keep in mind if you're doing this. If you had something that was really quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It had a really um, dense, color-wise, depending on what you put on top of it, you know, it's really going to come through the other side. But that's fantastic. And then we've got the tree over here. This is cardstock again with the witch and having the tea party with the kitties. That's still a little bit damp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the glossy again, nothing on the other side. Here we have Prague again. Ooh, yep. Yeah, I'll definitely use this for pockets. Oh, there's a little bit of coffee stuck there. Okay. Oh, okay, now here, look at this. Oh, wow. So this was matte photo paper. Wow. Oh, that's super perfect. <laughs> super perfect for Halloween creepy. Oh man, I might just do nothing but coffee dye <laughs> for the rest of the, the season. Wow, look at though, that looks great too. So, I we haven't had a bad, we haven't had a bad page or so, anything that's been disappointing. Ooh, I love how the lace looks in on that. All these bats are fantastic. The lace, 
All the different laces looked great. I had three different kinds of lace. This is great. Yes. Oh, look how the tree comes out in behind her. Where'd that tree come from? Hmm. That has, uh, that almost has some green tinge to it. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but that looks quite green. Okay, and here's the other matte photo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks great on the back. There's the witches there. Ha! Okay, we're almost at the end. I would call this a resounding success. Oh, yeah. This is... So I'm definitely going to be looking into getting the more of the matte photo paper. The matte photo paper definitely is better than... Where's the... Um, so this is... This is cardstock. So this hardly held any of the blacks. So I think what I'll do is I'll print this off next time on the matte paper and see the difference because this really looks so rich. And we didn't lose any of the darkness of her dress at all. Wow. Ah, so good. Very, very interesting. Look, this to me almost looks like velvet, you guys. Wow. Okay. So, woohoo! I'm super excited. This was great. Yeah. These are fantastic. It's so, so uh, addictive. Because now you're like, oh, what could I, I, maybe this could happen or that could happen. But I'm going to have to rein it in. <laughs> I have to rein it in a little bit because I need to move on to the next step. That looks great with the lace, with the scary pumpkin guy there. Okay, there you have it. So... Now, now we know about using different papers and what we can get when we're putting them all together like that. So, a matte photo paper for the win, glossy photo paper, sort of for the win. We just have to figure out what to do with the bags. I wonder what would happen. You know what we'll do next time? Maybe I'll print something on the matte back of the glossy paper and see if we get something just on here that would be interesting um okay i'm gonna leave it there thank you so much for coming along with me i this has been just so much fun i just i've been so excited to share this with you and um, your response to part one has been great, so thank you for that, and I'm glad that it's inspiring some of you to give it a try, and to not worry about, first of all, making perfect coffee dye paper, and second of all, just putting it out in piles, and just letting it, you know, maybe it takes two or three days to dry, just put it away and forget about it, even though it's exciting because you want to look, and you want to see what's happening, um, I, I, no, I can't, I've done so many videos uh, in the last couple days. So we, this stayed inside overnight. Then, yes, I took it outside. It sat outside for about four hours. And it's really quite warm out there today. It's about 25, 26 degrees. And then I, um, it was, it's like this. So it was perfect out there. So the other thing is you can put it in these piles. And then if you're, if you have a balcony or a back porch, or somewhere during the hot months, or maybe you live somewhere where it's always hot, you can just dry these outside, you know, put something again on top, so that obviously <laughs> doesn't blow all over into your neighbors. So I did the third part three today with um, using the different, we did envelopes, we did other printed paper, or like book pages paper, we used stencils, and we used the, the, the spray, ch -ch -ch and um, so I'm really looking forward to finding out how that all looks with you guys again. So yeah, here's just a little sneak peek. Burr. 
let's see how this turns out. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Speak kindly to yourselves, enjoy your journals, and have a great night, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Mwah.